this is Pagan and his wife. Kitten tears. And welcome. This is going to be a tour of our zombie bunker in the game Seven Days to Die, which is a game that's on uh, in the alpha phase. Uh, you can get on Steam. And um, this is the fortress we've built to survive the seven day hordes that the game is named for every seven days. It's a post-apocalyptic zombie survival crafting horde game, I guess you'd call it. And um, basically every seven days a horde of zombies will come and seek you out, try and kill you, and if you're not in a pretty secure location that's exactly what's going to happen. There are zombies around anyways, and you know, at night you don't want to be on the roads regardless or outside, because they will kill you. But primarily you're building these fortresses to survive these seven day hordes. So anyways, uh, it's day 205, which is... we've played this game quite a lot. I'm level 60, max level. Uh, most of my equipment's purple. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, my wife, Kitten Tears, is level 40. And um, we have gathered quite an immense amount of resources in order to build this wonderful fortress. You know, let me give you a quick tour. So, first off, decided to um, make an unorthodox sort of entrance. It's not the typical one block wide, you know, reinforced iron door entrance. Instead, we did a, uh, I guess what you'd call a drawbridge sort of style with rebar frames. It, uh, you know, it, it works just as good for the purposes here because, <coughs> pardon me again, because zombies cannot uh, jump across the too wide gap and beat at a wall with nothing to stand on. So they're going to fall down onto the uh, quadruple reinforced log spikes that line the entire pit uh, that are in the moat. Whoops. Around the entire fortress. Um, a lot of resources for those as well. Not as much as it took to make this <laughs> this immense reinforced concrete wall. Uh, just I have nightmares thinking of all the iron and the loot runs and mining runs it took to get that. But as I said, the uh, all the way around there's a moat, two wide, quadruple reinforced uh, log spikes. So. Uh, typical zombies just going to fall down there, bounce around, die. Not a problem. The only zombie that can climb walls, the screamers, I guess they're uh, called spider zombies probably properly. But anyways, they might climb around there, but that's why there's the overhang. They can't get around the overhang, so it's not a problem. And if they do, somehow, because when they die they do create uh, what we call meat mounds. Oh, thank you. Uh, what we call meat mounds. I think they're called gore blocks in the game, but so if they were to pile up here and somehow beat through the rebar frames right here, they would only still be in our entry room really. This is more of an entry room. It was going to be the garage if we ever got the parts required to make the mopeds that were new to this patch of the game. Sadly, uh, even at day 205, still have not found all the proper parts. Hopefully they'll be fixing that. I know they'll be fixing that in the next patch. But yeah, us and Kitten Tears are still without wheels, I'm afraid. Day 205. Yeah. Yep. But that, that's why I went with the unorthodox door, actually, here. I figured it was going to be a little tough to ride that moped across a one-wide bridge, so... I figured this would work just fine. You know, park it in here. This would have been the garage. But, you know, parked a little moped here. Super cool, but... Nope. Infinity water. Well, yeah, so now it's currently just the, uh, well, it's a little dark there, I can't really see it too well. Wow, that water looks terrible for some reason, this lighting, but anyways, this is the water source. Usually it looks better. Um, you know, you definitely need water in a post-apocalyptic zombie-filled world, so um, made this, crafted this into the building. Uh, you know, it's all handmade building, but this is, we can fill up on murky water here that we can bring upstairs then and, um, oil to make drinkable. But yeah, uh, for the next phase where Kitten Tears is, even if the zombies, you know, did get somehow through the rebar frame entrance here, this is still just an entrance way, in through here they'd have to either bust through the wall or get through the reinforced iron door, 
this is another killing zone here. These again are these are wood frames instead of rebar ones, but you can just pick them up. So if we knew we were going to have some kind of horde that was going to just kill us, and so far on complete standard settings in the game, uh, we have had no problem with hordes doing any significant damage to this place. So, but you know, if we turn it up, and we might, to higher settings before the next patch, just to see how much this place can take before it probably gets wiped anyways, even if they did get through there, and we thought it was going to be a problem, we would retreat further upstairs to the next level, uh, the living area up the ladder, and we would remove these wood frames. So again, it's a two wide pit there. Yep, a two wide pit that the zombies would be bouncing around, dying in. And furthermore, because I put uh, iron bars above, and we can shoot through them both with the crossbows and the shotguns and snipe rifles and all, we would be blasting away at them as they bounced around down there if they got this far you know, further uh, preventing them from getting to us. But so far, well, that hasn't happened. Yeah, they've never they've never gotten through the frames and I don't know, we've had at least no. six hordes here. It's never been a problem. Never been a problem. But, you know, I, I was being extra paranoid. Next time, maybe I won't do this right away unless we have it on an even harder setting, you know. But I've had, had some horrible things happen in this game. I've been overrun in some fortresses I thought were completely secure so got extra paranoid was high enough level we had enough resources I want to design what I felt was pretty much a zombie proof bunker and uh, I think I did a good job but you know hey give me your opinions feel free to comment on what you think uh, I did right and what I did wrong I'd be interested to hear but all right so furthermore if they did get that far up in the living area here Of course, you would smash that wooden ladder at the bottom of the metal ladder. Right, yeah, because currently, I guess zombies, other than the spider zombies, cannot uh, climb up a ladder if the bottom rung is missing. And that seems to be the case currently. It may be changed or whatever, but that's why the bottom one's wood instead of metal on that ladder. So we would smash that out. Uh, not going to happen, but even if it did. So here is the living uh, quarters level and crafting utility level of the zombie-proof fortress. So on the left-hand side here is our cooking area. We have uh, three of the fire pits with all the basic cooking things. This one has, you know, the iron grate, and uh, the cooking pot, speaker, and chests. You know, right-hand chests are medical supplies, and we have plenty of those. Uh, and the left-hand chests our foods, you know, the raw food stuffs and the cooked food products and the uh, drinks. Currently, as you can see, uh, we're pretty well stocked in everything. You know, that's why I felt secure in building this. We've been looting and looting and I'm, like I said, level 60. I can make pretty much everything purple, except for my poor sniper rifle. Uh, but someday, someday. So anyways, we're living off now a diet almost consisting almost completely of what, Kitten Tears? Bear, bear stew. stew! Yep, bear stew. Definitely the best uh, food in the game currently, in my opinion. It hydrates you, it fills you up, and even better, and more important in my opinion, restores 2.5 wellness. And I mean, that's why my health is way up there. I think it's 170 now. You need it at this level. Uh, keeps you keeps you alive when you go into those cities. So, yep, I've been strengthening up uh, good old kitten tears on a diet of bear stew, and it's helped immensely. Right now, at 165 for health. Yep. She, well, now on this, yeah. Yeah, she used to always be down below uh, 60. It, it was pretty tough, pretty tough. But she's a tough cookie now, kitten tears. Yep. yep. So then, on the right hand side here is our forge room with forges to keep the uh, fires burning and the production going as long and as efficiently as we possibly can. Bunch more chests attached to the wall. You know we have our iron chests, brass, and whatever else. Stuff for making bullets. Stuff for building. All of those goodies. Those are the utility rooms there. And then if we go in here, the living quarters. 
perhaps the least useful, but my favorite room uh, here, or one of my favorite areas in the home anyways. Uh, purely aesthetic. Uh, I spent a lot of time decorating with the little post cornices and all. Uh, I thought it came out pretty good. We have a nice little four poster bed here. Well, two poster. A cute little window with a view up the road into the bleak future full of <laughs> death and nothingness. The road we've died on many times. Uh, indeed. And of course, you know, and of course you got to have a nice place to live. What good is the zombie apocalypse if you're not going to live in style, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a cute little leather couch. We can watch the dead TVs and, you know, pretend it's not as bleak and miserable as it is. And then the outside. Ah, uh, yes. And another layer, of course, of the defenses is the balcony here, running along the entire outside of the building, and it is uh, right here against the wall side. We have even more iron bars, which is just more horrifying amounts of resources it took <laughs> to complete this, but so yeah, running across the whole thing, hugging the wall, iron bars. So, you know, if we've got huge hordes beating us, bouncing down, that we don't want them damaging stuff. We want to kill them as soon as possible so we can shoot through the iron bars. We just keep pounding away at them as they're dying down there. Uh, very effective, um, you know, and we can of course shoot off the through the railings because there are iron bars as well. You know, little window to look in, and see what's happening in there. Yep. So, again, uh, this is very secure. Never had a problem. They've cracked a few of the reinforced blocks. And that's why I'll definitely, before I fill the next patches, I'm going to turn up the zombie spawns and see just what it can take. I will try and include in the later part of this video a typical seven-day horde, just so you can kind of see, you know, what I mean, how effective it is. Oh, of course, yes, right here is another little thing, Kitten Tears' favorite way to leave the building. And I agree, you know, so you don't have to mess with those, uh, those rebar frames down there. You just leave right like that. You know, it's just high enough you're not going to hurt yourself, so you just go and then go off on your Kitten Tears adventures. And there are many of those. Um, but yeah, quick way to leave. So, another layer of the defense. And then, of course, um, sadly, you currently can't use these beds as your spawn point. Ah! Oh. Alright. What is that? That is an airdrop. Um, we're not going to go for it, but airdrops are pretty important. Every three days or whatever you have it set to, you know, see it there, there's a flare attached to it. Uh, yeah. Airdrops nah. fall from the sky. They have some of the best recipes which you need to craft all this wonderful stuff for survival. So generally you would run for that and try your best to get it. Okay. So, uh, that's the little balcony, and then if we go back inside, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll show you my other, my other favorite place in our zombie fortress, and where our actual spawn point is. As I was saying before, the thing is, yeah, you can't actually use the bed as a spawn point. Use sleeping bags and beds in this game for spawn points. So the wonderful bed can't use, so that's just decorative. Our spawn point's actually on the roof, which is up this uh, ladder here. Aha! In our cute little rooftop garden. Yep. This is um, both aesthetically pleasing, um, <laughs> at least to my senses, and uh, extremely useful, because for all that bear stew, one thing you certainly need is a ton of potatoes and corn. And uh, it's just, in my opinion, it, it's not safe to have your gardens out there. there. You can make gardens outside your walls and have walls around the gardens and whatever, but why the hassle? This way it gives you a little something else you can do at night, you know, while you're hunkering down and the zombies are prowling. You can do a little gardening, you know, get a little zen going. Why not? Um, so our sleeping bags, the cute uh, spawn point here for sleeping under the stars, under the two beautifully entwined trees. Um, I could say something corny about that, but I won't. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. There we go. 
cute little rooftop garden. Um, the pinnacle of our zombie fortress, which as you can see by the way is set at a crossroads. Um, you know, I tried to search for a really good place once I decided I had the resources and I was high enough level that I could make this <laughs> monstrous fortress. Um, I'm sure you know, lots of you out there will laugh and say it's whatever, but you know what? I'm proud of it. And anyway, so what a, a perfect area. So resource-wise, this was what I felt the place. North here up the road a little bit, we have a popping pills, and it's always great to have uh, for the medical supplies when it respawns. Perfect. Very close. Uh, to the south is one of the smaller towns, which is great for, you know, minor loot runs, gathering basic supplies and what have you. Very close distance. To the east is one of the hub cities. It's a smaller one. I guess they used to be called hub cities. I don't know what you'd call them now, major cities. But they're the ones that are uh, just crawling with the zombies. The spawns don't end, uh, but have the better resources, higher chance for good drops. And they're also just full of dogs, which are the worst. Uh, I hate dogs. I hate them. Anyways, as you can see, even at this level, we haven't fully uh, explored all that city. It's just, you know, that's how much I dislike them. And uh, we weren't quite ready. We definitely could handle it now. But so, as you can see, it's, um, this area is a pretty good focal point. And even further, if we want to go south from this little city, south and again to the west, by the way, this is my current home is actually down here in a little outpost we made, a little reinforced concrete outpost, because it's next to yet another big okay. hub city. city. Yep. yep. I mean, just perfect. Um, but a little bit too far away to go daily, and you don't want to be out in the road at night, so we had to make a little uh, supply uh, depot there you know, for looting the city and then bring it back to the house. But it was another uh, part of the design of this place was finding what I so felt would be a good location. I figured once we got those mythical mopeds, you know, be able to ride up these roads. I wanted on roads, you know, for easy travel with the mopeds, be able to explore further in the game. Hasn't happened yet, and I'm, I'm afraid it might not happen before the next patch, and most likely, because uh, they're adding, like, HD zombies and armors and whatnot, I'm sure this game won't be compatible with the next patch, so might have to wait until the improvements which are coming in the next one to make it easier to get some of those parts. Um, but that's another reason I'm making this video, so I can remember the things I liked uh, about this fortress. Try and make a bigger, better, or more efficient version uh, after the next patch. But yep, so there's the rooftop garden in the Kitten Tears and Pagan Zombie Apocalypse. Zombie